Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're here at the Ward 4 Forum who, uh, for the City Council election coming up on November 7. I'd like to welcome you, Mr. Bouchard, as a candidate. Thank you. Unfortunately, your opponent uh, chose not to be here tonight. That's, that's too bad. Uh, I don't know what uh, she really thinks about uh, being available, accessible, and transparent about her issues, but she chose not to answer our questionnaire. You did. Thank you for doing that. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you for being thoughtful about your responses. Uh, and to uh, the audience, I also want to thank uh, St. Paul Neighborhood Network uh, that is doing the filming of this today. And uh, thanks for having us to do this. My name is Andy Dawkins, and I was a state representative uh, for 15 years at the state capitol and uh, an unsuccessful candidate for mayor in 1993. Hi, my name is Abu Naeem. I'm a former Ward 1 St. Paul City Council candidate, and I'm currently a board member of the Hamlin Midway Coalition. And to the audience as well as you, Mr. Bouchard, I'd like to talk about St. Paul Strong for a second. Uh, St. Paul Strong is a nonpartisan uh, uh, group of individuals in St. Paul who believe in government transparency, government accountability, and uh, we have a website that uh, is all one word, St. Paul Strong, and then dot com, St. Paul Strong dot com. And you should go to that to look at Mr. Bouchard's answers uh, to our questionnaire to be better informed about his positions, if you'd like to do that. Uh, we don't endorse anyone. Uh, and uh, there'll be no opening statements, Mr. Bouchard, uh, but we will give you a one minute uh, at the end to do a closing, uh, a close to the audience if you'd like to do that. Okay. Um, and uh, it's, uh, um, it's uh, the, the candidate who's not here tonight uh, is unfortunately not here, Mitra July. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I just really think that it's un uh, it says something that she's not willing to participate in this, but thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. The first question, you've just knocked on my door. You've got 20 seconds to tell me why I should vote for you. <laughs> That's a good one, 20 seconds, okay. Inside of 20 seconds, I've already blown it. Um, I'm an honest guy, I believe the, the, the one commandment that everything rides on is thou shalt not steal, because everything else falls under that. You can't take my property, that's stealing. Yeah. 20 seconds, thank you. You're out visiting relatives in rural Minnesota, and your uncle asks you, why do you like living in St. Paul? It's the best place in the country to live. I've been all over the country, all over the, the world, actually. And uh, people hear me gripe about our government, and uh, I say, why don't you move? Because Minnesota is the best place to live. It's the government that has to go. Uh, next question. What is the least favorite thing living in St. Paul? Crime. Okay. I've been uh, carjacked. I've been broken into. My neighbors have lost, uh, I have one neighbor that lost somewhere near $30,000 in the last few years to crime. And that's the biggest problem. Tell me in a boo something that, uh, Let's us know, uh, kind of from your gut, um, how you think about racism. Uh, racism. It's hard to deal with that stuff because, now, I have a neighbor who lives across the street who asks, who, uh, it's a black and white couple. And uh, I have a Trump flag in front of my house and they said to me, you know, it's really surprising, you're the only man in the neighborhood that talks to us, and you got a Trump flag. Also, um, it's hard for me to be angry at uh, different races because in Vietnam on May 14th, 1968, my life was saved by a black man who knocked me down so I wasn't killed by the rocket that killed two other people. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, next question. Tell me and Andy that uh, that you truly understand what it means for uh, poverty and inequity? Well, I grew up in poverty. Uh, we, didn't t we didn't have any heat in our house. We had to burn wood. Um, my father was uh, underemployed. We had nine kids, and uh, we used to heat uh, tin cans. I think the soap came in, dish soap came in tin cans back then. We'd boil water on the stove, and heat up the can and pour it in the cans and put it at the foot of our bed to heat the foot of our bed. Um, 
the way we got out of poverty is everybody in the family worked. I started caddying when I was, I think, eight years old. I lied about my age to get the job. Said I was kind of small, but that's, you just have to continually work all your life in order to get out of poverty and stay out of poverty. What was the last volunteer activity you engaged in? I believe uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant with me. I've, for about 25 years now, I've been cleaning up my neighborhood uh, at least three times a week, getting a grocery bag full of garbage off the street. I've uh, chased a homeless camp off of 94 in Cleveland that was uh, every morning I was going out there and picking up needles on the ground in 20 and 2021 and 2022. This year, um, I don't see any needles. I've traced, chased those people off and uh, secured the fences so they can't get under 94 bridge and hide. And uh, now the current problem, which I haven't seen for almost uh, three or four weeks now, is I see metal, uh, like aluminum foil, on the ground where people park on St. Anthony on the front of Jota 94 and do some kind of drug. I think it uh, might be uh, uh, fentanyl and heroin or something. That's what people tell me. I use a hand extender to pick this stuff up because I don't want to touch it. I've heard these stories about you touch a piece of fentanyl and you're dead. So, all right. Uh, next question: Who has been a role model for you? I have a lot of role models. Uh, Ronald Reagan is my political hero. Um, my older brother, who was uh, diligent at studying in school, we didn't have uh, a whole lot of space in the house for him to study, but uh, he got himself uh, worked his way through college and became a uh, uh, PhD in mathematics. He was very diligent all his life, and he and he has helped people outside of that. And when he retired, he's uh, uh, mentored kids in school, so get them on the path of mathematics. So he's one of my heroes too. Right. Uh, next question: um, Is your neighborhood safe, and what makes a safe neighborhood? My neighborhood's safe because I live there, and that's what makes my neighborhood safe. I keep in touch with all my neighbors, and, and we make sure that, uh, well, it isn't like a gang or anything, but we make sure that we're observant of what's going on in the neighborhood so that uh, crime will be eliminated eventually, especially if we have some more police uh, on the street. So you win the election. How will you work to reconcile the reality the people living in different parts of St. Paul have had different lived experiences with regards to public safety. How will you work for solutions that are citywide that take into account the folks that live at the, up by Highland uh, Parkway and the folks that live over by Payne Phelan? I used to live on Payne Phelan, so I have a, have a history there. Um, I just go out and talk to the people and find out what it is that they want and what they need if it's in my neighborhood, I know what it is. Um, and when I've been over to the east side, I think they need uh, some police presence there. Uh, a few years ago, you could get five houses for a thousand, for a hundred thousand dollars over there because nobody wanted to live there. Um, I would have to get involved with uh, neighborhood councils and things like that. Uh, I, I hear stories that. Uh, People on the council, it's a part-time job, but everybody treats it as a full-time job, and I kind of find that not to be truthful. If it was a full-time job, they wouldn't have time to do anything, um, especially with the kind of bill, or the, the resolution that went through on the Summit Avenue. If they would have been paying attention to that, that never would have passed six to one. So, and, and the way to do it is to get out in the neighborhoods and speak with the people, find it out. Thank you. Uh, what have you done to personally curb gun violence, and what will you do if you, once you're elected? To personally curb gun violence? Well, I got a 20 gauge in my living room. It will be used if somebody breaks in the door. I don't go outside with a weapon, and uh, I really wish everybody else would. Um, I'm not for gun control, because people with 
If you outlaw guns, who's got the guns? That's a, you know, it's a standard line. The criminals have the gun, but that is a fact because they don't obey the law. I know because they broke into my house and there's a law against that. So if you have an, a law against guns, the only people that are gonna have them are be criminals. And if I have, if you outlaw a gun and I keep my gun, I'm a criminal and I will keep my gun. Thank you. So what <clears throat> was your position on the rent control uh, when it was on the ballot? Did you vote for it in 2021? No, I didn't. I wouldn't vote for it, and if I have any say about it, we could repeal it. I, I believe it does nothing but hurt renters and hurt landlords. Maybe this week it's uh, just fine because my rent's under control. However, four years from now, when inflation drove this up and that up and the building needs a new roof or new windows or whatever, the landlord can't afford to fix it. So you're, what you're doing is creating a ghetto down the line. And uh, when I say ghetto, I don't mean the ghetto in Warsaw, Poland. I'm talking about poor neighborhoods that people don't have a chance to move out of and move up, et cetera. All right. All right. Uh, what do you think is the most successful way to create um, new affordable housing? And uh, is there any particular model do you have? I, um, I wish I knew all these things, but I don't. I, I believe that uh, for housing, there's a talk about a housing crisis. The housing crisis that I believe we have is the elimination of the family, single family home to be replaced by large apartment buildings, which benefits the city because of tax. It benefits the developer because he gets to build a building, but it doesn't help families because families don't live in apartments like this. I mean, you start out with an apartment, but you strive to get into a home that you own with a yard, and uh, you do that through work and education. So um, there's an outfit in St. Paul called the Rondo Community Land Trust, and I'm not sure that uh, everyone in the city knows about it, but I'd like to just do this with you for a second. Okay. A community land trust is where the neighbors get together and own the land underneath the structure. You buy the structure on top from the, from the neighborhood. And um, that reduces the cost of housing to start with, okay? And you got a 99-year lease, a dollar for 99 years, renewable after 99 years for another dollar. If you go to sell, you got to offer it back to the neighborhood first at a limited equity price so that it stays affordable for the next family that moves in. What do you think about that idea? It's confusing. <laughs> really? I, I didn't really understand it. Well, the ham building... My understanding is that you know, I own my home outright because it paid it off. So I have 100% equity in it. But I don't own the land. I rent it, and I believe it's from the county. Really? Yeah. You don't own your land that your house is on? I don't believe we do. I believe that... Uh, I'm, that's well, that's a land trust. Yeah, okay, Ramsey County has the trust in. <laughs> I guess so. All right, that's interesting. I want to have a look at that more. So, uh, Abu? Yes. Uh, we're, we are voting on a 1% sales tax increase on November 7th. Mm -hmm. Are you voting yes or no? And uh, what is your understanding on where that new money will be going to? And is there any guardrails? I am going to vote against this. I am going to vote against every tax increase that I can. I know that there's uh, inflationary pressures driving prices up, which is going to cause uh, services to be uh, limited. But I think we can find some cost savings somewhere. I know that uh, former, Norm, uh, former Mayor Norm Coleman in his eight years never raised taxes. And then when Chris Coleman came in, he said, we haven't had a raise in 10 years, and they've been raising the taxes every year since. At some point, we got to say that we do certain services like clean the streets, uh, plow the snow, not very well, but we plow the snow. These services are just, they're there. We should know about them now. You know, it's no surprise that there's potholes. Everybody knows about the potholes, but why are they there? Because we haven't been maintaining the streets with, uh, I think we used to call it uh, tarring the streets, but it's, it's an oil that's laid down to seal the cracks, covered with sand, and that would maintain the streets. You know, that costs money. If you avoid doing it, then you have a worse problem with the roads because uh, they start to break up with those free saw business. 
Um, I am opposed to all tax increases. What's your understanding of tax increment financing, TIF, um, and uh, how, how would you explain what it is to the voters? Uh, it's to me, it's a ripoff. Um, for I, I, I believe. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't pay humongous amount of attention to local news until this until I decided to run for office. Um, this uh, soccer stadium in Midway, it's my understanding that they don't have to pay any real estate taxes on that for 50 years. They don't have to pay it to the county and to the school district, but they got to pay it back for the loan that they got from the city. That's the increment that mm -hmm. um, whatever amount of taxes that they generate, it doesn't go to the St. Paul General Fund or the school board's fund. And instead, it goes to retire the loan they got. And so, it, it, in my opinion, uh, not running, but my opinion is that that's a giveaway that we give to businesses and developers that hurts the rest of the tax base. I, I absolutely agree with you, but uh, and now you've given me some new information. I didn't uh, realize that we're paying off their mortgages for them. Yeah. Um, is that isn't that what you just said? Yeah, that's yeah. why that's why that's, we got to no. that's why we got to pay attention to how much we use TIF or tax income Absolutely. financing. Absolutely, and uh, you know, since and I care and I vote and uh, everybody else does, but who who pays that close attention to it? And if you, if everybody did know this, I think we'd put a stop to it right now. So, how would you increase our tax base here in the city of St. Paul? I would uh, work. Uh, Diligently, maybe I could talk to Norm Coleman and say, "How did you get businesses to move into St. Paul when you were mayor? Because they've been moving out nonstop forever, and the only way I think to have a decent city is to have employment within the city. So I'd have to bring in the businesses that would bring would reverse what we did with the trash collection. They got rid of eight tr eight." trash collectors and all those jobs and all those taxes and now we pay send money to New York to, uh, to uh, Tony Soprano I think it's waste management we send our checks to them and we have lesser service in our trash collection well we had those eight haulers here and all those guys playing paying taxes maybe we won't be in this situation Mr. Bouchard you know I'd like to just compliment you on of your willingness to put these issues out there for the voters to pay attention to. And I hope people are paying attention to some of what you're saying here. Thank you. But, you know, St. Paul is known as a one-party town, yes, DFL party town. Um, is that a good or a bad thing? That is a bad thing. Why? Because, uh, well, if uh, you were been paying any attention since uh, the last election, there we are just getting slammed with everything. This, this Summit Avenue is a perfect example. They, they base the, uh, this bicycle, $14 million bicycle project on Summit Avenue is based on the fact that Summit Avenue has to be reconstructed anyway. That is not true. You see, the, the infrastructure's been uh, there for 100 years. It needs to be replaced. No, in the 90s, the sewer and water was separate. Uh, sewer and storm water were separated. So that was done in the 90s. Anything else that has to be done, whether it be the changeover from lead to copper at the water, uh, where the water comes in the house, that can be done with just a hole. No open trenches. They can dump, they can push a 20 foot pipe underground, one after another, down the block with a hole on one end and one, a hole on the other, so they don't have to destroy anything. So. The idea that a summit has to be reconstructed for $100 million is false. So then that makes the $14 million bicycle project also false. You get rid of these kind of projects, um, maybe we can save some money. So um, because we don't have your opponent here, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like you to ask, answer some questions and contrast them to your opponent's position. So for example, how do you feel about rent control? I'm opposed to rent control. What you, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I think the best rent control there is, is a mortgage. I rented for, oh, I don't know, a few years when I was younger, and I had to move four times in one year, and I said, that's enough. So I, then I concentrated on saving the money, and you had to have back then, 
uh, certain requirements to get a mortgage, like have a job for six months, have a checking account, have a savings account, have this and that and the other thing to qualify for a mortgage so you can buy a house. Now, you're, now your rent's never going to go up because you're poor. the only thing that would affect your payment would be the heat and your taxes. So you can control your heat, but just say, uh, well, it's, uh, I can save some money by leaving it at 68. Uh, taxes, you can't do much about unless you, everybody votes for lower taxes and we get the taxes lower. But so at the end of uh, 30 years, my, my house payment was uh, started out at 350 bucks a month. It was killing me when I was young. It was nothing when I was older. And that's, so I have no problem right now being retired. I don't have a mortgage. I only have to, my expenses to live. And that's what everybody needs to work for, eliminate as many, I would like St. Paul to be a majority of homeowners instead of renters. So again, contrasting your position with your opponents, um, uh, how would you tell a, a voter the difference between you and her on public safety and crime? Public safety and crime is different between me and my opponent in that She's a socialist, and a socialist doesn't really care about the law. You don't care about your rights. And so if uh, you want to have uh, your rights taken away, go with uh, Mitra. She doesn't really uh, care about individuals. She cares about the group, and the group is not what I am. I'm an individual. I celebrate individuals. Okay. Um uh, now, on climate change, how would you characterize the differences between you and your opponent? Well, uh, uh, at a recent forum, I'll tell you two things. I ran for the Senate last year and had a League of Women Voters forum uh, with uh, Aaron Murphy, who was the Senate candidate I was running against. And on the issue of uh, climate change, she said, that she is a two, she, uh, her family is a two car family. They've, they've talked it over and decided to go to one car so that they have a less impact. And I, uh, at a recent uh, forum, had a really uh, wise remark for my answer. But the real answer, I would say, if you want to, if you think we're affecting the climate, we could reduce auto traffic by having safer streets. Safer light rail. Light our, I won't go on a light rail. I've been on it a couple of times, and every time I've been accosted or witnessed someone pe being accosted. And uh, so if you have a safer light rail, people will drive less. They use the light rail. They use the bus lines uh, to get out of this. <laughs> this is way beyond the cities or my in, in my ability to do anything, but there's a lot of war going on right now. When these explosives go off, there's a lot of heat, and that heat goes up in the atmosphere. You're not only killing people, but you're killing the planet. We could stop some wars, but that's a little bit beyond the, the realm of a city councilman. So I know that um, uh, you've uh, written some answers out as well, which I'd like the voters to take a look at your questionnaire mm -hmm. responses by going to stpaulstrong.com. Uh, but um, uh, why do you think St. Paul is at war with its uh, trees? That's, that's funny. You know, I, I, on September 14th, I had, was right here at a League of Women Voters thing, and uh, I got home, and on the news, yeah. they just finished up a story you know, with the DVR. I backed it up. St. Paul is going to get $33 million from the federal government to plant trees in traditionally or systematically deprived neighborhoods. $33 million to plant trees. At the same time, they're going to knock down somewhere near 900, between 700 and 900 trees, old growth, huge trees on Summit Avenue to build a bike path, which is just insane. Uh, I think I lost track of the question here. Well, no, but just to contrast again, uh, I believe your opponent has said that uh, uh, she's in favor of the bike uh, path uh, on Summit Avenue. So. She is absolutely uh, for it. She, uh, she's one of the six councilwomen that voted, or councilmen, because there are 
Tolbert's a man, um, that voted for it, uh, when she gave her reasons for it, she pointed out that uh, someone that uh, she knew or someone in the neighborhood was riding a bike on Summit Avenue and was uh, killed by a school bus, which is very traumatic for everybody, the children included. And her second reason was the murder of George Floyd. How George Floyd has anything to do with trees and bike lanes and infrastructure, I have no idea. But um, she uses good words like diversity, inclusion, and equity. If you would do it that way, that's die. Mm -hmm. So, uh, will you have a question? Is. Yes. Uh, so, in 2018, the city council approved an interim parking permit to Allianz Stadium site for development. Besides the stadium, it's now a sea of parking lots. Recently, the city council has approved a new parking permit. What are your thoughts on the current stadium site, and how will you make developers keep their promises? I don't think you can make a developer keep a promise. I think uh, I'm, I'm totally opposed to that stadium to begin with. If they wanted to build a stadium there, they could have put the baseball stadium there. That would have made a lot more sense. I just I don't know how you develop something that, and I'm really surprised that people go to this thing. It's it it is packed when they have a, an event, but you know uh, there's nothing there besides the stadium. And I can't imagine the development that I saw in the past with these tall, you know, twenty-story buildings and whatever was. Uh, oh, come on, it's not realistic. I uh, I don't know how you do that. I really don't. I think you start you knock it down and start over. Years ago, when they, when when uh, that was became an empty lot, uh, Home Depot wanted to build there, and. The city said, oh, well, uh, yeah, but they, we want you to do this, this, and this. And they were jumping through hoops for, well, I think, almost 18 months. And so, yeah, we'll have apartments above the Home Depot store, and we'll have this, that, and the other thing. What else do you need? And then you're going to hire 22 um, uh, Asian Americans and 13 white guys and 42 people of color and three immigrants. And that's when Home Depot said, Keep your empty lot. We're leaving. We're done with this. Because all along, they wanted to build a stadium. Mm. And didn't tell anybody that. If we would have known that, yeah, I think Home Depot would have been there. And we desperately needed Home Depot at the time. What one word would you choose to describe your campaign? <laughs> Hopeless. Well, that's interesting. Um, but I'm still glad you're running. And I still wish that we had more competition, more people running for yeah. office. And I want to congratulate you on your willingness to put your issues out there and talk Thank about them. Thank you. So I really do mean that. And I wish that um, Council Member July was here to defend her incumbency, but she yeah. chose not to come. Um, we're, we're getting close to the end here on this one. Um, can you uh, uh, think of a question that we wished we would have asked you? Yeah, tell me, uh, tell us about yourself, Robert. <laughs> Tell us okay, about yourself, well. Robert. Okay. Uh, I'm one of uh, nine children. Grew up in St. Mark's. I actually grew, I live two blocks from here, right across the freeway. My mother lives two, grew up two blocks further south on Cleveland, and then two blocks further on Dayton off of Cleveland is where I grew up. I've been here all my life. When I uh, graduated from Central, um, there's a lot of turmoil going on. We're moving and we're not moving. What school should I go to? I finally ended up joining the Air Force, and the Air Force said, hey, he's smart. Let's teach him electronics. They, you know, I was a D student because I didn't care. I didn't, you know, I wasn't a good student at all, but they said, you're smart. They tra trained me in electronics. They said I was honest, and they gave me a secret clearance and trained me on secret communications equipment, put me on top of a mountain on the west coast of Greece for a year, and then said, well, thank you for that. Now you can have your choice of assignments, but we're putting this stuff in Vietnam and we need you there, so I said, send me. The reason I'm running for office is because someone needs to stand up and do it. 
Last, in the last cycle for Senate District 64, nobody was running against Aaron Murphy, and I gave it all I had. I spent a, way too much money on it, and uh, a lot of times, and I got somewhere around 7,000 votes, which is about the same amount of flyers that I personally hand, handed out. So the reason that I'm, uh, the reason I tell you about uh, volunteering for Vietnam, I didn't want to go there, but they needed my skills that they taught me. So that's why I went. I stood up for it. And the reason I'm running is because I see a lot of wrong things going on in City Hall that doesn't, the people down there don't listen to the public. If they did, there wouldn't be this threat of Summit Avenue being destroyed for no reason at all. They talk about we have to raise taxes to uh, help a neighborhood that was deprived by the freeway Years ago, a historically harmed neighborhood was done 50 years ago or so when they built the freeway, and at the same time, we want to do historical uh, damage to Summit Avenue for $114 million plus $33 million to build, put trees in other neighborhoods. I'm tired of it. That's why I'm running. I think that was a great close as well, and so I, I'm not going to deprive you of your one minute here in another second, but... I got a, a question that I hadn't thought of asking until you were here, and I'm hearing your positions. What would you suggest for our nation as well as for our city to try to deal with the partisan divide where there's so much folks that just circle over here or circle over here? What, can, what would you suggest we do? Um, I'm not sure. I tell you, I, before, uh, before I came here tonight, Someone was walking by my house and tried to take a flag off my house. And it was kind of upsetting. And I was called a Nazi. And come on, talk to me. Tell me why you think I'm a Nazi. And if they don't talk to me, I can't explain that, you know, my position. You're not and a Nazi. I know I'm not a Nazi. I know who the Nazis are, and they're not in this country. <laughs> there are some of them in this. There's some people that believe in that stuff. There's a lot of people in other nations that are killing people right now that sure like Nazism. But I'm not a Nazi, and the person that called me a Nazi refuses to talk. Where did you learn that I'm a Nazi, or people who think freely are Nazis? Who's teaching you that? And that person was probably 16 years old purple hair. I don't care. You can have purple hair. I love individuals. We need to be, a, well, I believe in liberty. Let me put it that way. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to take a minute now to do a close, you don't have to because I think you've done a great job already with saying who you are and why you're running, but go ahead, take a minute more if you want. Well, I'll take another minute and just say thank you for doing this. This is the, the most I've done. I mean, as far as I'm unable to knock on every door, and so when I do a forum like this or the Zoom calls or whatever I've done, maybe someone will hear the message. Maybe my message isn't as cool and as articulate as my opponent who can go right up to the second with her speeches, but you see a difference between her and me if you see these forums and, and uh, surveys that are passed out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bouchard. So uh, to the audience here, the election day is November 7th. Uh, there's early voting. You can go vote uh, uh, tomorrow if you want. Uh, again, I refer you to St. Paul Strong's questionnaire and answers, responses. And uh, Mr. Bouchard, you're welcome to go back and uh, add to your responses if you'd like. Uh, we're opening it up after the forum tomorrow if you care to put more on there because we're asking the voters to go look at stpaulstrong.com to see what everyone's been saying, although they're not going to be able to see your opponents, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Ward 4 is on the board back there behind you. Basically, what's the boundaries there on your Ward 4? Wow, it's, uh, I've never, I've had seen two maps, so I wasn't sure exactly what it is, but I come down to summon in some spots and jogs around and goes up into uh, St. Anthony's Park <laughs> midway. I got a par parts of Como, not all of it. Yeah. So it's kind of, I think there's somewhere near 30,000 people within the ward. So if you live in that area, folks, 
you got a vote to make now. Uh, you got a choice here to make about who you want to be your next city council member. And uh, this will be broadcast on SPNN. Uh, it's also be on the uh, on the SPN's website. So thank you all very much, uh, and we'll move on to the next debate. Thank you.